Frank, you took your pictures in the 70s and 80s. What got you started? I joined a group called the Waterfront Writers and Artists, and we had poetry readings. And uh, myself and two other fellows produced a slideshow that was showed at the end of the, the poetry readings. And um, so I'd worked on the waterfront for 13 years before I began to photograph, uh -huh. which was a great way to get some actual knowledge of the way the thing works. And uh, years passed, and then um, Photo Central offered the opportunity to do uh, uh, an exhibit of my work. And we were looking for a partner to uh, create uh, another aspect to it. And that's how we found you, David Bacon. Ah. So when you were out there on the docks with your camera, um, what did the other longshoremen think about it? And what did also, what did the company think about it? Did they, did they just sort of let you wander around with your uh, camera? No, they did not. So you had to do this sort of like surreptitiously under, yeah. under the. Yeah. So how did you manage to do that? Because you got some images that are pretty uh, way well, way out there. Some people were graceful about it, and others were not. And I got thrown off a few ships, off a few docks. I got fired a few times. What I learned to do was not to ask permission because I was trying to be a nice guy in the beginning. Then I learned that was wasting my time. But most of the longshoremen, when I started to photograph them, I would say, brother, I want to take some pictures. Are you that okay with you? And some would say yes, and most of them said, sure, go ahead. So it was really very graceful, and they knew me for a long time. They knew that I wasn't just there for that day. I was going to be there tomorrow and the next couple of years afterwards. So it was really pretty easy for me, actually. You know. Well, you know, in, in the pictures that I have, you know, half of them are recycling workers and half of them are farm workers. And taking pictures of farm workers, you know, what you just said really rings a bell to me because asking permission from a grower to go into a field and take pictures of workers, uh-uh. Yeah. You know, the, the answer is always no. So you have to kind of like go in and talk to the foreman and sort of chill out the foreman and then joke with the workers and then you can take the pictures. You know, we produced a book um, f with this same group with Photo Central and the person that I asked to uh, share the book with me was Gene Dennis. And uh, why don't you come over here, Gene? Hi guys. Hey there. <laughs> Gene was somebody that was into waterfront writers as a poet and his work always captured my attention mainly because of the accuracy that he is able to express about the relationship of the men to their work and about the relationship to the men to each other. And uh, that's why I liked Gene's work so much and asked him to be a part of my work. And you were librarian for the union for many, many years, right? After I worked on the waterfront. Mm -hmm. How many years yeah. did you work on the waterfront? I worked on the waterfront for 13 years, and then I was injured, and it was time for a career change. Uh -huh. And I went back to college and got a degree in archives management and worked here at the International of the ILWU running the library and eventually the education program for 25 years. Well, you know, it's interesting seeing the, com the, the two sides of this show relating to each other because on the one hand you have longshore workers who are working around these enormous machines you know and in an industry in which there's a huge amount of money invested by employers in the big ships and the cranes and all the things that it takes to move stuff around on the waterfront and then the workers who have a very strong hold over that process and you know, really good contract and, and good wages and benefits. And then you have kind of like almost the opposite. You have people who are working in the fields who have sometimes no union at all, um, totally insecure, working in an industry in which the people's ability to do things with their hands is what really counts. Well, you know, I think that the, the work I do is sometimes I, I call it the reality check, in other words, we're going to take a look at the way the world really is from the point of view of ordinary people, you know, working people like us. You know, so there's a certain agitational part of it as well, too. I want the pictures to have some function. I want them to be able to participate in changing things. One of the, I don't know actually if we'll, maybe we'll put it up on the wall, maybe we won't here, but, but there's one picture 
where the workers are testifying at a city council meeting in Alameda. And they are going to try and get the city council to agree to raise the garbage rates enough so that they can then negotiate a wage raise and, and double their wages, which is exactly what happened. And so one of the ways that the workers did this is that they got some pictures that we had taken of when they won their union election. We made these big prints out of them, and the workers held up the prints to show the city council that they had made this decision that they were going to have a union, and they, you know, this was what they wanted. And I thought, you know, that is a great use of the pictures, you know, because you can see that they're having a function in there beyond just sort of showing what the world is like. So I like the interaction to be able to sort of see how the photographs then become tools that the workers can use to change the world. It's sort of like a, uh, you build a relationship. The pictures become sort of like the vehicle for having a relationship between me as a photographer and the workers and the union. And it's, that's part of what I want to do too. So, so taking the pictures also went along with talking to people and interviewing people. And ultimately, you know, what I did and do with it is combining the interviews and the photographs so that you get this sort of complex view of what life is like Yeah, I think it's like remarkably um, effective. Well, I think in what, what we have in common is that, you know, we're looking at part of life that is not on TV. You know, it's not on the front pages of the newspaper. You know, working class life, what happens to us as working people, it's kind of like we get shut out. And so we are opening the window here, you know, and taking a look at what the world looks like to us and hearing the voices and, you know. What would you like your audience to come away with? First, that they will have learned something new about the workers that are represented in the exhibit. But second, that they can do it themselves about their own lives. And I think that was, when we were doing the Waterfront Writers and Artists, we, made, we just had a ripple effect, or at least we elicited a response with a, a, a ripple that went up to Canada, where other workers who were writing and painting and so forth, workplace-based art, um, were getting together to do it together and getting a, a larger audience, getting attention to, as David said, the lives of ordinary people. What I would like people to take away from my work is basically a sense of respect for everybody that labors, whether they're union or not, whether they work in an office, whether they work in a field. That's it's irrelevant to me. 99.99% um, of us have to work somewhere at some time. And it's not easy because most of us are not doing what we want to do. Most of us are doing what we must do to be able to carry on with our lives. And I think if we're stay aware of that fact and, and uh, connect with everyone else that we have to deal with in the outside world with the same respect we would like some people to treat us with, that we will be a little more patient with people, that will be a um, just more aware of what it takes to go through life and to uh, struggle to make your ends meet. You know. Well, I think that that in addition to all of that, um, yeah, I want people to appreciate the courage that it takes for people to go to work and support their families and earn a living under very difficult circumstances sometimes. Um, to appreciate the courage of people in risking a lot to try and change things. Um, you know, you have pictures of workers fighting for economic justice, for against immigration raids, against racism, um, and it takes courage for people to do that. And I hope that the people can look into the photographs and they can see that and appreciate it. Um, but I think there's also one other part of it that, uh, that is important, and that is that uh, what, we d what we are doing here, all three of us, we are producing socially conscious art, you know, art that is part, very consciously part of a social movement for change. And I don't think that that is very 
well respected in our world, in our art world especially. I don't think you're going to see that at the De Young. I don't think you're going to see it at the Berkeley Art Museum. Um, and I think that that is wrong. Uh, you know, I've, there have been periods of time in the history of this country when the art of working people was part of the mainstream and part of and a very well respected part of our culture. And so I think that our show is fighting for something in the art world as well too. And that is for the legitimacy and the, not just the legitimacy, but for the importance of having art that really reflects the reality that people are dealing with day to day and that is part of a movement for social change. Um, I think that that's a some place where I think our art world needs to go. So I hope that we get some curators from some institutions to come and see this show and think about what they're putting on their own walls and wondering why there's such a, what I would say is a terrible absence of art that really relates to the concerns of the people that you see in the photographs that we have on the walls of Photo Central.